Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Friday, September 11th, 2015. And you're listening to the Super Organized Universe radio show. I am James Law Jr., the Super Organizer. Good morning. I am trying to pull it together this morning. I um, had last night uh, my last episode of the Under the Dome after show on AfterBuzzTV.com, and it was the series finale. It's crazy. Crazy. I won't tell you what happens, but it was crazy talk. It was the best episode of the season, and it was I didn't get out until after midnight, and so it was a little late for me, so I'm going to do my best today for all of you because you guys all matter to me and as before i do anything else i always like to say good morning to the man who takes care of everything electronical for me and make sure you can hear me clearly brian hey we we uh mounted this microphone on a different piece of wood here i see it i'm looking at it I like it. I'm so much more comfortable now. Yeah, no, I like it. It looks really good. Before, I would have to stretch out all the way over here. Yeah. And this is good radio that I'm showing you. I had to stretch yeah. out all the way over <laughs> yeah, I here. Know, I, I can see everybody. Sorry. And then <laughs> and then talk to you this way. But now, look, I can be over here and actually doing my job. Yeah. <laughs> I like when you're doing your job So and talking to me at the same time. You can do two things at once. I like it, actually. It's a great idea. You can move around a little more. I can't hear you. I'd like to give a shout out to this incredible heat that we've been having. <laughs> shout out to, I like to shout it out. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm like, the nighttime is what kills me. I mean. There's no relief. No, there isn't. And, there, there, and yesterday, I think it was two days in a row, there was no wind. Nothing. There's no. There was no saving grace outside. You're outside and it's the same as in being in being Exactly. Those. Exactly. Target so. was my best bud for, <laughs> until they closed. They're like, you have to get out of here, Mr. Lone. And they're like, you have to leave. You're like, do I have to really leave? I'm right? looking for deodorant. And then, like, I don't know where the eye you have, is. You have two deodorants in your hand already, sir. I'm like, oh, do I? Oh. I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you already have food in your hand, too. You're like, oh, dang it. Yes, I know how it is. So, what well, happened to your pants? Right. So you're like, I don't uh, yeah. yeah. Well, good morning to you, James. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We're going to do a good show today. So, uh, as I always do before I, I um, begin actually going into topics, I am going to give my thanks and gratitude, especially on a day like today which is September 11th. It's a day that I think everyone in the whole world, but especially in America, will not forget. I know I won't forget that morning. And uh, and I also I wrote actually two uh, blogs about it today, one on the superorganizeruniverse.com and one on blackhopeproductions.com about September 11th and living in gratitude. And, um, and I'll go more to that a little later. But I want to first... Um, give a shout out to my mom Benita for all she does for me in the different ways and we've created a a newer bond over the last six and a half years since I've been home and we're not always most conventional mother and son but we love each other and we're there for each other and that's always very important not just today but any day and I love you mom um and September 11th so I wanted to remember those who lost their lives that day I also wanted to live I live in gratitude every day that I can have a life period um, I will never forget that morning, and it's a reminder that the next second, next minute, next moment is not promised. So you have to appreciate those seconds, minutes, and moments that you get to have. I think that's very important. I also want to think about the ones who lost their lives that day uh, and their bravery, the ones who lost loved ones that day, and their bravery to continue on with their lives. My heart is with them. Uh, and it could be hard to – I've lost people recently, and it could be hard to move on from from the loss. And I also want to give thanks to my New York family. I love my New York family, past and present, the ones who are alive, the ones who aren't alive. Um, I love you guys so much. New York is my second home and one of my favorite cities in the whole country. I live in gratitude every day that I get to go to the city and visit, and I hope to be there sometime next month. And I just, I just love New York so much. It's just a, a great place. And my living gratitude, I get to go there and see it. Uh, so I just want to give those little thanks and gratitude today because, like I said in one of my blogs, um, we should try to live uh, every day doing the things that we love to do or like to do and be with the people we like to be with and who bring us and feed us and serve us emotionally and psychologically I'm not saying, well, they want to feed you, too. It's good, too. <laughs> you know, I do like food. But um, but the ones that are there, that are there for you, that actually add to your lives. Because, um, like I said, we're not promised the next seconds, moments. And September 11th really put that into focus um, for me, that I need to uh, reevaluate and edit my life. And for all those folks who didn't get a chance to continue to live and all their hopes and dreams and and hobbies and just the everyday life that they don't get to live, 
I get you. I live in gratitude of that. So I just want to say that. So today's show is an all-tip show, and it's going to be uh, basically just uh, uh, me, and, I, and I'm going to be talking about, um, I have one thing in the beginning, and then I'm also going to be talking about, I call it 11 questions to ask yourself about your cluttered space. Because we're still moving right along, you made the commitment, you're, you're deciding you, need to, you want to organize life, you want to edit what's going on, so now we're going to continue talking about ways of looking at it and evaluating what needs to be done. But first, before you can do any of that, before you can do anything, before you can begin to begin to begin, I call this H is for honesty. That's right, kids. H is for honesty. Honesty. What's that? Do you know any honest people? Are you honest? You're honest sometimes. Are you honest with yourself? That's the, sometimes that's the hardest thing, isn't it? You can, you can tell somebody about themselves and, t- and open the page and read all along and tell them all about what's wrong with them. But can you look at yourself and do it? You would think you could do it because it's just yourself. You don't have to tell nobody. You don't have to do anything. But a lot of times we don't want to do that with ourselves. We want to kind of live in another world and kind of push it aside or put it down or put it back. I advocate honesty, being honest. And I relate this into organization and life coaching. Honestly, take two. Honestly looking at a situation. It means you look at a situation honestly. I'm going to keep saying honestly like 10 times in a sentence. It's honestly, honest, honest, honest. Honesty is the best policy when you're looking at a situation to reorganize or, or edit or purge or whatever. Anything that's going on in terms of setting up time management, setting up goals, setting up anything that has to do with any kind of thing of making your life better. I think most of us can agree that honesty is a good thing. I mean, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to say, you can't, honesty is bad. You can't be honest. That's crazy. No, I think we all can agree that it's good. Honesty and being honest are good virtues to have, I think. They're good, they're good things to have. And, you know, we're all human and stuff, but I think if you strive to be honest about things, that's a really great quality to possess. You know, I know that sometimes honesty hurts. Yes, it does. It's not always pretty, and it's not always fun, and it just, it can hurt. You can have realizations and go, wow, I'm that way, or I've done that. And it's not about blame or anything. It's just, it's just about just looking at a situation or looking at your actions just in an honest way. Being honest with oneself is very difficult, but I think before any kind of success can really happen or any kind of... Um, movement honesty is the best policy so before you organize your organize yourself or with a professional organizer i think you have to look inward and ask yourself some certain questions so here's a couple of questions i kind a couple of things that i feel are in the honest realm especially when it comes to organization or about to be you know organizing being honest aligns you with the power of strength Think about that one for a second. You are honest with yourself. You know what I mean, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this word just because I can't think of another word right now. Just you can you can look at your weaknesses and you look at them honestly, you can actually do really well in reversing them or changing them or modifying them into strengths. When you half look at them or kind of look at them, you're doing yourself a disservice. You're not really you can't really do the best you can do. So I kind of, you know, I feel you be honest with yourself, you see what's going on, you're better equipped to make the change happen. Another thing is be objective when looking at your limitations. Be objective. I mean, that's the whole thing. I'm like, you know, sometimes there's some things you just are not going to do just or you just can't do. There's, I mean, sometimes you do have like physical limitations or, or monetary limitations, some things you just can't do. But let's be honest about them. Not, they're not excuses because you're not looking for excuses. You're looking for things that genuinely are kind of a limitation. So you can, on the converse of that, you're looking at things that you know you could do if you put your mind to it. But there are a few things you might think, well, like for me, you know, there's a few things I just really can't do. I can't eat tons of salt. I'll explode. You know, just things like that. Just there's certain things you just kind of like, well, I can't do that. Um, 
but you want to be honest with looking at your limitations because we, some of us do have limitations. Just, you just do. Be real about your talents. Your talent, I mean, there's, there's some things that you actually, if you really honestly look at it, go, I am really good at that. Or I do really well when I'm working on that. Or I have a great ability to blank. I mean, like, really look at yourself. And it's not about being conceited or ego or anything like that. Just, but there's some things you probably do really well. Maybe you're not giving yourself enough credit. You know, or, but look at them. So you look at your limitations, going, I can't really do these couple of things. But you look at your talents, you go, I'm really good at blank, blank, and blank. They'll work to your advantage. Don't lie about your abilities. Uh, that's another one, too, because when you're being honest, you may tell ourselves, I know I can be a great blah, 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 or I know I'm great at this. Well, maybe you're not. Maybe you're just okay. Maybe you're mediocre. Maybe you're bad at it, at something. It's okay to be bad at something. There's a chance for learning and growth every second. You know, I'm just, I just, I like for me, James Lodge, you know, I will admit this on, I won't say camera, but there's, there's no camera, on radio. I'm not the greatest at math. Just not. That I just, I admit it, and I just, my brain is not wired that way. This is, never has been. My sister Sandra will tell you we took algebra like 10 times in high school. Yeah, so I just I just was not wired that way. That that is something that is not one of my strong. It's one of my limitations. One of my strong abilities. Now, do I know enough math to get me through certain things? <laughs> Sometimes, but I know how to hire people who can do the math for me. That's being honest with yourself and saying I'm not that good at math. I have some limitations in it, but I'm smart enough to get help. Because it's never it's never a bad thing to get help. Hello. Be forthcoming about the things that make you feel embarrassed. Here's a little something that kind of, you know, there are things that, you know, you may feel a little embarrassed about. Just kind of admit them to yourself. You don't tell anybody else. You're like, I'm kind of embarrassed by my house. It's, you know, it's not me, James, but just saying in people in general, I'm embarrassed by my room. It's it's a mess. I can't, I can't let anybody in there. I can't go on dates and bring anybody home. And just admit that to yourself. It's, I think it's a real thing to get honest about that because then you can actually make change about it. So just say, yeah, that embarrasses me. Or... I have a bad set of dishes. My dishes are all mismatched. I'm kind of embarrassed by that. These are things you can actually work on and change. But first, it's okay to admit if you're embarrassed by it. Uh, you can come to my house and you're not going to be drinking on anything. I'll give you a bottle of water. But you're not going to know my 10 different glasses that have like Mickey Mouse on one and Snoopy on another. No, that's not going to happen. But it's okay to feel embarrassed about a few things. Yeah, that's fine. Because you can work on it. Do you need outside help? I just kicked on this a second ago. Do you need outside help, such as a therapist, life coach like James Law Jr., or a friend? I, I mean, my end there, family member, too. Um, outside, it, asking for help is, is, is a great thing. Um, pride gets you nowhere. Let me say that another time. Pride gets you nowhere. If you need help, get help. Ask for help. It's okay. Um, there are people out there who have tools and training to help you along. It's fine. We don't know everything. I don't know everything. I always say that. I don't purport to know everything. I don't. I always, I always say, I know what I know. <laughs> um, but I mean, meaning that I there are things that I do know, and I, I know them well. Those are, th- those are the things I will stand by. I don't know everything. I've been to therapy. I've had, I haven't had a life coach, but I've talked to my life coach mentor. Um, I've had talked to friends sometimes there's sometimes I have a couple of, I have a couple of friends and that's also important to you to pick the right people <laughs> to, that you want to talk to. I have a couple of friends who always, when I talk to them, I walk away with a, a new understanding about something or something to think about a new way to look at something. And I feel good. I usually feel better than when I walked in by the time I'm leaving. And those are the kind of friends you want in your life, obviously. You know, it's like those are the one. Those are the ones you want. So that's very important. So get help. It's fine. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's no take away the stigma. Just do it. Because the end result is you want that. You want to be a point B, or you want that next step, or you want a better, smoother life. That's that's the point. So screw all the other the ego and all and the stigma, and all that. Just get help. Here's one that's interesting, and that I I run across in my life coaching practice. Do you have the answers within you 
but are afraid to accept them. A lot of times we'll second guess ourselves. We'll third guess ourselves. Fourth guess ourselves. I don't know what we really call it. But we will, we, will, we will sometimes talk ourselves out of stuff, which I've talked about on the show before. And actually it's the right thing. You may already have the answer inside. And sometimes getting outside help or just an outside ear, you need validation to, to whatever it is you're thinking about. It could be a change. could be a move. could be organizing, um, getting rid of something. A lot of times people have the answers inside. They're afraid to be honest with themselves to let them out. Think about that. See, starting with honesty, you won't have a problem with looking within and if there's answers in there, they'll reveal themselves. I always believe that. So you're like, my, I'm embarrassed by my room. I'm afraid to get help. Uh, well, I don't know what's going on, what I'm going to do. Then you say, okay, I'm going to look at myself and really be honest and really look in there. And, oh, my God, there's an answer in there. It's been sitting there all along. I should clean my room or I should get a new bed or I should get rid of those 20 pairs of shoes I've never worn in my entire life. Like, you have the answer, you're just either afraid to accept it and do because you think once you make that, once you have, once you find the answer, then I get to do something about it or accept it and kind of go, oh, this is my truth. That can be scary also. So, think about it. so that's my, that's my H is for honesty. And I, and you can find that on my, on my, uh, my blog, uh, superorganizeruniverse.com. And I'm going to post it on my superorganizer page too on Facebook. I think it's a fun one. Just honesty is the best policy. It really does. It's not about being pure and saintly. It just means you're looking at yourself in a way that's true, and you can actually make change happen out of it. So when we come back after these uh, few little breaks, uh, we're going to start the 11 questions to ask yourself about your cluttered space. You're listening to Super Organized Universe Radio. Neighbor, get some sod put in? Yeah, it's Marathon. Yeah, that's what I got. But yours looks so much greener and thicker than mine. What's going on? I'm going to call the growers. Southland Sod Farms, may I help you? My Marathon sod doesn't look as good as my neighbor's. Are you sure yours is Marathon? That's what I asked for. Let me do a computer search. Mm, we don't have a record of your delivery. You didn't get genuine Marathon sod. What do you mean? Sometimes unscrupulous contractors, retailers, and other sod farms lead you to think they're selling Marathon, but then substitute a lesser brand. That really tees me off. How could I have known I got a cheap imitation? Look for the bold, genuine Marathon label on the sod pallets when they're delivered. Don't get cheated. Look for the genuine Marathon sod logo displayed by nurseries and landscape contractors at the Yellow Pages. Or call 1-800-4-MARATHON for a free do-it-yourself video and authorized dealer list. That's 1-800, the number 4, then Marathon. Or visit the website at www.sod.com. Hi, I'm Edward James Olmos. I'm here to talk to you about RAD, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. Think about it. You have choices that you can make in your life. Good choices and bad ones. Drinking and driving, bad choice. Why? The life you may take may even be your own. Think about it. Drinking and driving doesn't mix. Get a designated driver. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. So, I'm a dog, and I just got adapted by this new human guy, and I'm starting to wonder how he got along without me. I mean, okay, something as simple as walking around the block. He's got this leash thing, and he puts me on one end and him on the other, and I'm just taking him around. I, I think he's afraid of getting lost. Without that leash and me guiding him along, I don't think he'd find his way back home, but it's kind of cute. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs> Los Pollos, home of flavor down to the bone chicken. As we say in Spanish, el sabor hasta el último huesito. At Los Pollos, we serve delicious Cuban slash Mexican marinated chicken. 
we are cooking our chickens in rotisserie ovens to give you a well-seasoned, well-marinated, well-cooked, delicious chicken. We have three locations to serve you. In the city of Bell, we are located in 6201 Atlantic Avenue on the corner of Randolph and Atlantic. In the city of East L.A., we are located on 5161 Pomona Boulevard on the corner of Atlantic and Pomona Boulevard. And in the city of Downey, we are located on 7940 East Florence Avenue in the corner of Paramount and Florence. Come to Los Boyles and experience the most delicious chicken that you'll ever have the pleasure of eating. Welcome back to Super Organizer Universe Radio. I'm James Lodge Jr., the Super Organizer. Glad you can join me today on this Friday, September 11th. I hate to jump in and interrupt you. Do, I, please and, do. And I always interrupt you because you never know when I'm going to jump on microphone. I know. I love it. That's great. But I, I'd like to uh, to give a shout out to the best time of the year, last night. Oh, yes. <laughs> the greatest sport in the history of humanity. Return. <laughs> Even though it was the Patriots, that's fine. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, me too. You're right. Exactly. It, it's back. And yes. it's beautiful. And it smells great. And it's, that's how I remember it. Football <laughs> season kicked off yesterday. <laughs> I agree completely. I, this is the happiest time of the year for me, besides Christmas. Besides Thanksgiving or so, Halloween? Oh, yeah, Thanksgiving and Halloween. This is a good time of the year, it's isn't a, it? It's, a, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Uh, there you go. Oh, I love it. I love the Andy Williams version and Johnny Mathis version of those songs. Um, yes, I'm very happy also because my Steelers opened the whole season, of course. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, the, all, that's all I can say well, about that. Well, the Steelers that. played. I'm, that's, yeah. yeah. So I was happy about that. They just didn't play well. They just didn't play well. <laughs> I'm already a little nervous already. We had an uneven season last week. But that's, that's another show. Sports is another show. But, yes. But I just had to give it a shout yes, out. Yes, I'm right about that. Right. And I know there are a lot of women out there who do like sports. So it's not just, 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 not just men. A lot of women like their sports also. Go Steelers. Anyway, I like that. Thank you. I love the music. Okay, so. Uh, and as you know, on this show, I would like to do all kind of stuff on the show. So that's fine. Anyway, so, okay, so 11 questions to ask yourself about your cluttered space. This is something that I kind of came across and through my, almost my travels, but through, I guess, through my travels of clients and through my clients. And these 11 things are just such simple things to ask yourself if you have a cluttered space, whether it's work, home, garage, whatever. And uh, so these, I'm going I'm to start reading these off to you and talk a little about each one and see what you're going on. So, Asking the right questions can really inform your decisions. I think that's, I think we all know that, right? It can also help you get clarity, too, on a situation. So if we tie in what I was talking about last segment, we're being honest. Now you can ask yourself the honest questions and get clarity on what is going on. If your home or office is cluttered and full, then you take a look and ask these questions. Here we go. One, do you have piles of paper sitting around because your cabinets are full? And I mean cabinets like file cabinets. Are your drawers, excuse me, are your drawers full? Well, I mean, do you have things where you can't even close a drawer because it's just stuff jammed in? Do you, even if you have, do you have a space that you would have for papers, but that is, is piled up? Papers, I will say this every time, are the biggest source of clutter for, from the, for me and for people that I work with. Papers are insidious. And when I say paper, that also includes magazines. That includes newspapers. Yes, people do read newspapers still. It really is insidious. I mean, just papers everywhere. I mean, we get so much, I mean, we're getting junk mail again. For a while, there was no junk mail, and all of a sudden, we're getting it again. So you got junk mail, mail files the kids homework the kids field trip stuff pamphlets brochures from different community events i mean there's papers everywhere you're printing out papers from bills and maybe you're working on something just papers 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 it's crazy (sighs) luckily there have been a lot of a lot of places are trying to cut down on that and do a lot of things electronically and like that but there for me i even for me as a business person there are still some antiquated procedures with our government um, that I need to have papers and paper versions of stuff, paper copies. It's like, really? Really? I love to throw all that crap out. I couldn't just have electronic versions for everything, but 
can always have that. So ask yourself that question. Do you have piles and piles of paper that just are not, they should be somewhere else and you, you don't have them anywhere? Number two, do I spend more time dealing with, I went blank for a second, I went blank for a second. Do I spend more time dealing with my stuff than with my friends and family? This isn't super common, but there are, th- there are times where you're just, you're always at home. Maybe you're always trying to edit through things and you're trying to pull things together. But you do that all the time. Um, or, you're always, or you're always trying to stay on top of stuff and you don't have a system. Cause it's, it's a good one. You don't have a system. But you're not really, you're not really cluttered. I, mean, I guess you can be clever. You're not like a hoarder in there. But just like, you're just kind of messy or things aren't in order. And you haven't properly put a system together. So you're always cleaning up. You're always picking up. Um, and there's no, there's just no system. And so you're somebody's doing that. You can't go have lunch with your girlfriends or you can't go to dinner with your mom or you can't, you know, you can't get together because you got it's Saturday is your one day off from work. Cause we have those days too. It's your one day off from work and you got to You got to do that laundry. You got to clean, get better systems in there. You can actually kind of, uh, eliminate some of that and get more time. Cause being with friends and family and having personal time is very important. I will always state that to you. Being organized is great, but you got to have time with your friends and family. Okay, number three. Here's one. We've talked about this on the show um, several times with several of my guests. How long does it take you to find an item? Uh, one of my guests talked about, um, I think it's an average of 17 minutes. Yeah, that's a long time. Just even 12 minutes, five minutes, even a minute. Have you ever tried to count a minute on something like you know, hold your breath for a minute or this for a minute? And it's it's a lot. It seems it seems fast in some ways, but when you slow it down, it is a long time. Looking for something for five minutes just doesn't even just stay five minutes. That if you do that every day, let's say once a day, that's twenty five minutes a week. Let's don't stop. See, I can't even do math. That's thirty five minutes a week. <laughs> so I told you my limitations. I'm honest with myself. Um, thirty five minutes a week. That's a, that's over a half hour. You can be doing something else. Leave it that way. Um, that also means that your house is completely disorganized or you have no system in place, like you're looking for keys. My keys are in the same spot every day. I, when I come home, I put them in the same spot. When I'm ready to leave, they're in the same spot. My wallet's in the same spot every day. I'm not going to tell you where it is, of course. <laughs> uh, but I have them somewhere where I know that's where they are. And my brain, I, I, I created a habit of it. So my brain already knows that's where to go. It takes me 20 seconds, 15 seconds, 10 seconds to grab those two things. That's kind of what I'm talking about. So it's take a long time for you to find an item or how long it's taking. Number four, excuse me. do I let my friends and family give me items to store at my place and have a hard time saying no? That one, okay, here's one. I deal with this with a lot of my... Um, my clients who are, are older and who are mothers or grandmothers or aunties where they have their kid stuff or the kids are like, I'm moving. Can you hold on to these boxes? And I'll start out being a couple boxes and suddenly it's a dresser. Then suddenly it's a chair and a dresser and a couple boxes. Suddenly the mail's coming to their house. I mean, like it's just, all this stuff starts happening where you may have had an immaculate house. Your house was beautiful. And you had lots of room and you could like dance through there. And then a year or two later, you have two rooms that are cluttered full of stuff that's not even yours. Not even yours. And, and here's a little side a side thing that happens to you sometimes where then suddenly you feel ownership over it. And you want to really hold on to it for them. It's a sign of kind of like, well, I want to keep this for them. And, and I, you don't want to get rid of it. Almost. You want them to get it, of course. You're like, get it out of my house. But then in some ways you're like, well, it's kind of, uh, it reminds you of them. Maybe they don't come around as much. Maybe they're busy. Then you start holding on to it. But the meanwhile, your house is completely cluttered. And the other thing is not saying no. Your friends are like, can you hold this for me? Just think about it. You get 10 friends ask you to hold one big thing in your house. Just say your house is a two-bedroom house, two-bedroom, one-bathroom house. And they each have, each have you hold one, just one big thing. They can clutter up a room, depending on what the things are. It's not even your stuff. And maybe you think if I say no, they'll be upset with me, or they'll hate me, or they'll feel I feel, I feel bad. It's like screw all that. And so they're adults. If they're adults, that's their stuff. They bought it. 
they had it. Whatever life changes they are making, that's their decision. They need to figure it out. If you really don't have space and it really does impede um, your living, I, I suggest don't do it. Now, if it doesn't impede your space and you're there to help, I mean, I'm not saying you should never help nobody, but I just think, I mean, I think it should be, there. it should be within limitations. You know what I mean? Just kind of just, you know, don't sacrifice your living well and living organized for the sake of others. Don't do that. It's just not good. Number five. Do I have more stuff that I can keep track of? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yes. Do you have more stuff? Do you? Do you have stuff that you don't even know you have at all? You know you had it when you bought it, of course. And you knew you had it when you stored it somewhere in your house. But do you even know you know you have it? I mean, I can tell you for a fact, and I will admit this live, or those of you guys who are listening to this afterwards on the radio, I have probably too many CDs that I probably should go through and get rid of. I just haven't. For a while, I was doing what I was uploading into my iPod. And for a while, I was replacing some of them through digital means. And then I stopped. I don't know what, what I got. I used to I used to know. I don't know everything I got in there. I'm sure I got stuff. I got those. I got those. Um, they don't have many more, I'm sure. Those Case Logic uh, CD sleeves. Do they zip up? They have a little handle on them. I got, I got three or four of them somewhere in the closet. I probably should go through them. I probably got some old, uh, I don't know, Black Sabbath or something. I don't know what's in there. Some old Madonna. I don't know what's going there. I probably should get rid of it. Or at least go through it. See what I got. So I'm admitting that. We all kind of have stuff. But at least it's somewhere it's not really bothering me too much. The thing for you is if it's sitting out or if it's in boxes and bins that are not marked and you really don't think they are, it's time to go through them. It's time to see what you got. Just, just do it. Just do it. Am I constant? It's number six. Am I constantly clearing spaces for people to sit down in my house? <laughs> ah, when they come over. Yeah, I, I have friends where I, and I won't name them, of course, um, that I go and there's a spot for me to sit. And that's my spot. Um, I can't really deviate from that spot or go anywhere else. I don't have, I don't have a myriad of choices where I can sit. I have that one spot I can sit at that they cleared out for me right before I got there. Oh, that's cute. So look at that because that, that also means if you have a living room and you can't see the living room, you got a problem. If you have couches and love seats and you can't sit on them because there's stuff on them, you have a problem. And if you're my friend, I have a problem because I can't sit down on the, on the wonderful love seat and couches. Dang it. If you had a bed you can't sleep on either because you got stuff all over it, you got a problem. Because I've talked about this before. Back in the day, I used to have like one side of the bed was all of my papers and books and things I was reading. So I learned how to sleep on one side. But if somebody wanted to come over and like hang out, I'm like, uh, well, yeah, we'll sit outside on the porch. You can do that in L.A., I guess. You got a problem. So look at that. So those are the first six so far. We're going to go to commercial break, and we're going to continue um, on this journey of the 11 questions you ask yourself about your cluttered space. This is Super Organized Universe Radio. What's up, this is Warren G, you know what I'm saying? I'm here giving it up for Rad because they do a lot of good things for people. Before you drink, make sure that you got somebody that can drive your butt home so you won't crash or get pulled over and get a DUI. So go ahead and follow the route and everything will be cool. And don't be no fools. Peace, baby, Warren G. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation, Rad, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. You might know me, I'm 50 Cent. You may follow my tweets, my Facebook friends. Odds are a few in six degrees separate us. We're that close. What's crazy is one in six don't know where their next meal is coming from. These are your co-workers, your neighbors, your friends. Hunger's too close for us to ignore. So visit feedinamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank to see how you can make a difference. From one close friend to another, let's do this. I'm 50 Cent and together we are Feeding America. 
message from Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hey, I'm James Law Jr., the Super Organizer. I host Super Organizer Universe Radio every Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Join me each week as I give you tips on how to organize your life, home life, work life, family, all needs organization, and I'm here to help. Every Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here on Adrenaline Radio, Super Organizer Universe Radio. Organizing shouldn't be sour. It should be sweet. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. My webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at thatsnotcool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Back to Super Organized Universe Radio. I just love our little bumper music. I love it so much. I do. I just want to. I, I always say this all the time. I want to write a song or something to it. Wanna, or some kind of lyrics to it. You're back. We're back. I'm back. And we're talking about 11 questions to ask yourself about your cluttered space. So we're on number seven. Yeah, here's one. I've talked about this before on the show, but I'm going to say it again. Do I have to buy something that I know I have, but I can't find it? I hate that so much. I don't use the word hate very often, but I use it in this situation. I hate it. Because I'm like, I know I have that light bulb for that motion sensor light outside. I remember I when we bought it. We bought it because we bought two of them because they were on sale. And I have it I put it somewhere that I knew I remember where it is. And now I can remember where it is. <laughs> I can't find it. And I need it like by tonight. I hate that. So if you're doing that, that's not good. Because that really actually, though, that's something tangible. That really does affect your pocketbook. And that sounds, that sounds old, pocketbook. It, how should I say it? It affects your wallet. That's what I should say. It affects your purse, your wallet, your bank account. There we go. Now I'm back to 19, no, 19, 2015. It really does. Because, especially something like me, if you're like me, if something's on sale and something I know that I will need, and saves me the, the, and also time too. Saves me the trip to coming back. I'll buy two or three of the same thing, and then store them so that when they go out, I have I'm good for a while. I don't have to worry about it. That's the problem. Oh my god! I, I just I hate when I have to go out and buy it. Because I'll tell you something. That's time again. You're spending money. You're spending. It may even be the same price it was before. So you may be even spending more money. And I'll tell you something. This is like it's like it's like it's like I'm at the magic castle or something. Like a magic trick. You get home, just to say that the motion sensor light, I replace it, I go into a cabinet, and there it is. I mean, like, literally, it'll happen two, three minutes afterwards. Oh, there are those batteries that I was looking for. They're sitting right there in front of my nose. But I went out and bought, like, another pack of batteries from Target, and they weren't on sale at this time. That bugs the crap out of me. So it pays to be organized and have place people have hey, people have places for things that you'll remember where they are. So, but that's something especially I said again. It's it's you're losing time, losing money. So that's something you really want to look at. Are you always buying stuff that you know you have in the house because you can't find it? Oh, did I make that clear enough? How much I hate it. Okay. Number eight. I touched on this a little bit a little earlier um, with number four, but. Am I holding on to stuff because the kids might want or need it? Here's the deal. And this can happen, and this, there's different stages of this because it can happen at any ages. Because I, I have clients of all, I have kids of all ages, grown, you know, young, school age. What we feel is important a lot of times is not important to them. And again, being honest, 
I think it's I think there's several things that need to happen. One, be honest about why you're holding on to certain things that are the kids and not yours. And look at and look at the motives behind why you're holding on to them. Because sometimes if it's if it's there's if there's some sentimentality, that's valid. If you're like, wow, I really just kind of that painting is just so cute. I just I mean, I remember when they did it and and you ask them, they don't really care about it. You can't get mad at them. They've moved this is that's their life. They've moved on. I don't care if they're five, six, ten, twenty, twenty five, thirty. If you want to keep it because you like it, that's one thing. But if you're keeping it under the guise of they may want this, they'll get mad if I throw it out because that's their childhood. That's their, they have their own, they'll tell you what they want and don't want. Most of my clients, especially adult kids, will tell me, throw it out. And the and their parents or grandmas or aunties will say, no, I'm going to hold on to it because they, they're going to get mad. And I'm like, listen to your kids. They're telling you what's going on. And that's another thing, too. You have to let them make decisions. And if they don't want blank, then they don't want it. Let it go. And if later they do want it, then you, you can say, I asked you. You have, you have proof. I asked you. I let you make the decision. And you chose to say, you know, get rid of it. And that's a life lesson for them, too. It's not always fun to watch sometimes as a, as a parent or adult or whatever. But it's, it's a life lesson. We all have decisions that have consequences sometimes. It's just how life is. And, again, if you're holding on to stuff in, in your space – as taking up your space, then you're impeding your own progress and your own well-being and your life. Because you deserve, as a parent or an auntie or a grandma, to have, or uncle or dad or grandfather, to have the life you want and to have it be organized and have room. You worked hard. You deserve it. If your kids are grown, like we're thinking of different levels, then that's their stuff. Either have them come get it if they don't want it, if they want it, or get rid of it. Of course, you're going to work with them and talk to them and come work that out. But if they tell you it's okay to get rid of it, then get rid of it. That's how I look at it. I mean, just, I, mean, just I, I want you to live a full life of not worrying about that kind of stuff. So that's a little something for you to uh, think about. Number nine. Now, I have written this in a blog where I'm like, okay, I believe that everyone can have at least one junk drawer. So the question I have you at number nine is, how many junk drawers do you have? Or you would say to yourself, do I have? I'm Mr. I have one. I allow myself one in the whole house. I don't have a junk, I don't say Christmas, (laughs) wrong time of year. Even though I got to say a little side note, a little side rant. I was at Big Lots yesterday, and they were setting up Christmas. I'm like, we even got through, la- we barely got through Labor Day. Set up Christmas, really? Anywho, um, I have one drawer. That's it. And actually, it's in my room, and it has like just miscellaneous stuff. It's just some miscellaneous things I just can't see to find, really find a spot for. There's sometimes there's things that are random enough, and maybe like you only have a few of two things of this or one thing of that that they don't deserve their own space per se. But if all your drawers are junk drawers, you got a problem. If you have a junk drawer in every room of your house, you have a problem. If you have drawers that are that are over, you can't even close them because you have so much junk in them, you have a problem. So you're being honest. We got we got to be honest with ourselves, and honesty means you can admit that you have problems because there's always a solution. That's the great part. You recognize the pro- identify the problem, you can have a solution. They're not forever. It's not about blame or shame. I always say it on this program, we don't do blaming or shaming. We're just being honest. And it's not a negative thing. Being honest with yourself can be positive. And so if you have drawers that don't close, or you have a beautiful like armoire, beautiful chest of drawers, and they just they're just full to the gills with stuff, or they're breaking. Or they're super old. I mean, like, you have to look at that. Plus, sometimes um, junk can be um, fire hazard, depending on what it is. You know, you don't want that, obviously. Um, you don't. You don't want. Uh, you don't want a fire hazard happening in your house. You don't want anything. You know, happening. So I say, go through those drawers. Go through them. You can have one. Pick a room, and you can have one. 
But the rest of the house, you want to have all your drawers be able to close. And that's that. We know no more, no more, no more. Number 10. That is actually specific to um, ad- ad- I said adults. Well, that's obviously true, but specific to people with kids. School age, babies, toddlers, school age, tween, even teenagers. Are the kids' toys everywhere? I raised a child, so I know how this can be sometimes, where you just, it's, sometimes the kids, you know, especially when they're really, when they're really young, yeah, they're, they're, they're playing with toys, they throw them around, they're, they're learning motor skills, so stuff's thrown here and there, so that you, so your living room may look like it's a playpen that exploded, right, it just kind of happens, but at some point, you gotta pick it up, I know folks who, the kid has thrown stuff from four or five weeks ago, and it's still on the, on the floor, it's a hazard. The kid can trip and fall. You can trip and fall. I have stepped on things barefooted that I wanted to cry. Because some of those little toys, and this actually goes a little further even into um, school age, like those bionics and stuff, and Legos. A Lego, if it's turned a certain way, God bless America, you will hear every cuss word come out of my mouth. It is not pretty. Or like little um, Hot Wheels. Some of those cars are very intricately, intricately made. And some of them have like little fins on them and things, things that stick out or are pointy. Have you stepped on one of those barefooted? Not fun. My voice goes 10 octaves deeper. Trust me. So you want to avoid all that. You know, so we get that. Yeah, the kids have stuff everywhere. And I, I talked about last week, um, the chores, uh, a week before last, about kids' chore, appropriate chores. You can go on my webpage or Facebook to see it. Um, you can start teaching them early how to pick up things after themselves and clean up. When I say when they're babies, you can't do that, but that's up to you. But if the kids' toys are everywhere, you got a problem. You got to pull it together because you still want to have a nice organized life. And there are so many different baskets and bins and toy boxes and things that are just really, are really cute too. And some that are really inexpensive that you can store the toys in after they're done playing. They do go to bed, obviously. They go lay down or naps. And you can do it, and you can just clean sweep the house and just, you know, get it out. So I, I think that that's something, too. But that's more specific to your parents. And I'll, now, I want to do a side note on this. I You know, being a, being a parent is one of the hardest, hardest things you'll ever do, of course. And for all you stay-at-home, I call them momagers. When you stay at home and you're running the house and you're having kids and you're and you're and spouse, or if you're a single mom or a single dad, you do the same thing. I guess it could be dadagers also. I know it's not always easy. And like I always apply I'll apply this to other things I talk about too, other parts of organizing. Yes, sometimes you're gonna slack. Sometimes you just you're just tired. You're busy, you're tired, you got other human beings you're responsible for. This my thing is making at least the commitment to want to have a system in the house making commitment to having a system in the house that it should work most of the time. Like I said, nothing's perfect. And, you know, and things, unforeseen things happen and things are unpredictable, especially with kids. Um, and I totally understand that. And I don't want anybody to feel like I'm, you know, attacking you for that. Just that there are things that can actually run pretty smooth when you have things in place and systems in place. Because I want things, because especially if you're the adult and you're the parent, I want your life to be as less stressful as possible and have more time, more quality time with your kids in other ways. Um, I, don't, I don't want you harried and running around and trying to, I got your dishes here and that's over here and that over here and the kids. It's like, and I also believe the kids should be a part of the process. The kids should be part of the process. Uh, it's a family affair because they will become productive human beings when they get older. You know, I'm so glad I learned how to clean and cook and, and do laundry. And and I think it's a great idea. Teaching a kid how to clean a room, I think, is one of the best things you could do for them. Because it shows responsibility and order. And I just think these are things that they – and, of course, authority because you're, you're, you're telling them and teaching them how to do something. And also it could be a bonding experience too. And like I said, you can make them fun, make, the, you know, make games out of it. There's a lot of stuff you can do in the whole organizational process. And But, but my concern – first would be for you guys who are the adults because I because you guys are running everything and I wanted to be smooth for you I want you to work smarter not harder right that's just kind of that's I will always I will always be supportive of you guys and what you do and number 11 
Yes, we got to number 11. How does it make me feel living in clutter? How does it make me feel living in clutter? Goes back to the very beginning of my, of my show, H is for Honesty. Again, you don't tell anybody, it's just you talking to you. Or if you're religious, talking to you, whoever your, your entity is you want to talk to. But it's your business. Nobody else's business. It's yours. And you're being honest with yourself. Yes, you're living it a certain way. You've probably gotten used to living a certain way. You've adapted living that certain way. But now let's be honest. Is it working for you? Is it serving you? Is it the best it could be? Just think about that for a second. It's like, look, at, if, you're, if you have a cluttered situation, that could be a cluttered desk. It could be a cluttered room, cluttered house, cluttered office, cluttered garage, cluttered car. Look at it and say, is this really conducive to living well? Is this really working for me? When I get in this car, can I find everything that I need to find within a reasonable time? When I get in this car, is do I have enough room for everything if I, if I have a last-minute purchase? Or something? Do I, have, do, I have to, or do I have to take 10 minutes to clear out the back seat because I can't put it in the trunk because that's full too? So it's all in the front. I mean, this, I mean really, you got to go run and grab your granny. Do you have enough room in your car to grab her and put her in the car? Or do you have to take 30 minutes to clean out the car so you can go get granny? I mean, like, just really be honest with yourself about how does it make you feel. May you feel bad? May you feel shameful? May you feel anxious, upset? Or does it make you feel good? Do you feel like it makes you feel good? Do you like? Do you feel like when I see everything, I feel better? And that's actually honest, also. And you can look in, and that's also you can look and get some help. Look into that. Like, why do you feel okay in the clutter? Or you feel like you feel okay in the clutter? Because I've heard that before. People say too. Well, I like I like my walls covered. I like having knickknacks everywhere. And some things are acceptable. Some things are just are not necessarily clutter. Because one band's clutter could be somebody else's whatever. You know, like, it's not clutter. It's just my stuff. I have a lot of piggy banks. I have a wall of piggy banks. I love them. They're all nice and neat. And they all have, like, little change in them. And they're from all over the world. I found a spot for them. I know some people would think that's clutter for them. It can be a little, it can be a little subjective. So, for me, it's not clutter because it's not in the way. That space, yeah, that space could be probably used for something else, possibly. But not. it's not, I'm not needing that space. I'm not sacrificing that space for anything. So it fits for me. But just that, just be honest with yourself. Just like, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. With me. I'd rather have that over there than blank. And that's also being very honest. Um, so, but how does it make you feel? Because once you're honest with how it makes you feel, then hopefully you will make a change about it. So let me list 11 things one more time so you know. And of course, you can find this on my website. It's superorganizeruniverse.com. And also, I'll post this on my Facebook page, forward slash the superorganizer. And 11 questions are, do I have piles of paper sitting around because my cabinets are full? And that could be drawers, too. Number two, do I spend more time dealing with the stuff that I have than my friends and family? Number three, does it take me a long time to find an item? Number four, do I let my friends and family, or friends or family, give me their items to store at my place and have a hard time saying no? Number five, do I have more stuff than keep track of? Number six, am I constantly clearing spaces for people to sit down when they come over? Number seven, do I have to buy something that I know I have but can't find it? That's James's most hated one of all. Number eight, am I holding on to stuff because the kids might want it or need it? Number nine, how many junk drawers do I have? Number ten, are the kids' toys everywhere? And number 11, how does it make me feel living in clutter? Those are the 11 things, right? Think about those, each of those, one of those. Maybe one of them speaks to you. Maybe all of them speak to you. Maybe six of them speak to you. But I think it's really important to be back again to being honest. Honesty is the best policy for yourself. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. (sighs) I know, it's just crazy. So the next thing I want to go into, because I think that's, we, we're, talking, we're on, we're on the, the, the whole thing of honesty, looking at ourselves. Um, I wrote a blog uh, the other day that really took off, apparently. People really loved this blog. 
And I'm going, and again, it's all about you because everything, this, this whole episode is about you, 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 you. And I titled this blog post, Why is for You? <laughs> and why is the letter Y? But why is for you, but look, why is for you? You, yes, you. You deserve to have a life that runs like a well oiled machine. And, you know, it's something that I think is really important to, to, like, look at that because we have so many things to do. We have, I mean, we have stuff going on here and there, and like I said, and things come up at the last minute, and things. You want to make sure that the your life can run as smoothly as possible. You should be living a life that works for you, not against you. Because there, there are days we know how it is. Sometimes there are days we feel like just everything is working against you. But we talk about in general, just in general, life should be working for you. The things that you're doing, the systems, systems you have set up, um, the truth that you tell, it should all be working for you. So I invite you to look at different routines and systems that you currently have in place. Again, so you look within you, look at the systems, see what's going on. And do you have systems in place? Do you not have systems in place? Are you like, I don't have any systems. I just, I kind of just wake up out of the seat of my pants and just kind of go whatever direction. Are your routines not really routines? Okay, that's the thing about this. It's kind of a weird thing. You think you have a routine, but really it isn't a routine. <laughs> like, it's just like, you think it is. I always say that we get used to our situations, but that doesn't mean they're working for us. You can get used to anything. We can get used to situations, especially if, you have, if you've never had a well-organized life, then you don't know the difference. And that's actually legitimate. That's a legitimate thing. What you don't know, you're missing. You don't know, you're missing, right? You just, you just don't. But I'm here to tell you, because you're listening to this program, I'm here to tell you, being organized does take some work. It doesn't mean that every waking moment has to be devoted to keeping everything in order. Let's take the word perfect out of everything. There's no perfection. Eliminate that from our thoughts and our, even our spoken word. You know how I feel about words. There's no such thing as that. But just really look at how things are working for you or not. Again, be honest with yourself. You owe it to yourself to be honest with yourself. Even if you feel like you're doing fine, I always like this. Check-ins are good. Self-check-ins can also be really useful. Um, almost like I remember a job I had where my boss would every year just ask me. It, was just, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't a performance review because we got those separately. This was just something you should just say, how are you doing this year? How are you doing? It was usually around December. How do you feel? How do you feel like this year went? Um, do you want to still stay at this job? You know, kind of just like a, it, was, it was kind of a casual conversation, but it was also on the clock. Um, but I liked the check-ins. It's kind of like, yeah. And even though I couldn't give her an answer, I had to like think about it for a second. I said, I need to get back to you on that. Let me think about that. And I really thought about it. And it gave me kind of my own evaluation every year of my life. Is this job still serving me well? Is it paying what I need to pay? Am I psychologically, emotionally still attached to the job? Is it working for me? And it gave me a chance. And literally, I mean, after the six and a half years I was there, it, I asked myself that question. And I left. That's why I came here on the radio and down to L.A. Um but yes, self check ins are really good. And I said, even if you think you're doing great and you're fine, do a self check in. Just kind of, you know, kind of do a little inventory. Of what's going on in your life? Like, just what's going on? Do it. I do it all the time. I still do it, and I evaluate all the time. This is not like a worrying thing. Just I evaluate all the time, so I can make better decisions, more informed decisions, more honest decisions about some of the next steps I need to take. And for you guys out there who follow me on my Facebook page, James Light Jr., you'll know that I have a lot of stuff going on. I have some great upcoming stuff coming up that I can't wait to announce to you guys um, that I'm working on. And uh, But I always do check-ins and make sure, are these the right decisions? Are these the right things? It's so true. Wow, that was a very honest episode today, wasn't it? It was all about honesty. I'm like... Wow, I just feel so invigorated, ready to take on the world as my song. Oh my God, we're ending with my song. Oh, I'm supposed to listen for a second. Yeah, okay. Yes. So, where can you find me besides here every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on adrenalinradio.com? You can find me um, on After Buzz TV. Um, I will be doing uh, three or four more shows um, through the fall, and that's afterbuzztv.com. I'm also on popcorntalk.com. And you just look James Lott Jr., you'll, you'll find me on there. And I do a lot of stuff. My YouTube page, which is the Super Organizer, James Lott Jr., it's all one one sentence. Please go there, follow, uh, subscribe to me. 
I want some more subscribers. I got a few recently. Just give me some more. Take a look at my stuff. My stuff's completely organized on that page by playlist. So do that. And then, of course, on Twitter, the Super O or Black Hope LA, which is B L A K H O P L A. Uh, on Facebook, James Lott Jr. My blog, the Super Organizer Universe dot com, and the Granddaddy of them all. My Facebook, my Facebook, my websites. I always do this every time. My website, the Super Organizer dot com. Actually, I've been um, updating it and working on it, and I have some exciting stuff coming from there too. So check that out. And of course, you just find me probably at a Starbucks near you. Who knows? In LA somewhere. But I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for listening. I will talk to you guys next week. Mm-hmm.